<laughs> Hello. This coming Sunday is the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Uh, and just a couple of things before we begin our discussion. Uh, people have called asking when we might change the times for the liturgies or when we might uh, think about moving our liturgies to, to inside the church. Just to let you know that we're, we're thinking about all those things. We want uh, our gatherings to be safe and comfortable. And so uh, we will be looking at um, uh, changes that will certainly need to be made as the weather gets cooler and, uh, and as the, uh, the sun uh, sets uh, earlier. This is a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which you are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. So eight years ago today, so about this week, the uh, Hurricane Isaac came into New Orleans and I was there for the second years of, yeah, the third year of uh, study. And uh, we all been told that we need to get the uh, gasoline. So if in case we need to evacuate, we have to like everything ready to go. And I got to uh, the gas station and we waiting for a long line and then we waiting, waiting and then finally like my my turn to get into the gasoline uh the gas station. But however my gas the, the, the door, the gas door is on the left side and I'm parking on the left so I need to go to the right to get the gas. And in doing that I cut in the other people <laughs> in line. And I thought like because you know Costco you can Go either right. side, right. but this one like I cut it in front of him, and it's happened. <laughs> he come up to me, knock on the window, and he say all oh. kind of oh really? Bad thing. Oh, he got that close to you? Yes, he oh, he, op gosh. he open the door, he go up, knock on the windows, and then say everything and just like F word and everything. <laughs> 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 and I said like I'm sorry, <laughs> I apologize. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I should say, I should ask you before I cut in, in that, but it's scary. I, I thought I was put my life on the thread because in that situation, everyone wants to get the, the gas because we don't know how much gas the gas station had left. Uh, hmm. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all had experiences, well, most of us have had experiences of, uh, of uh, having offended someone and... Uh, and I guess and without being aware of it, you know, I mean, I mean, we say things, sometimes we do things, uh, and, and kind of the, 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 uh, let me start again. You can cut that, right, can't you? Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think all of us have had, uh, an experience of, um, of offending someone without knowing that we've offended them until of course it comes back to you either through someone else not that person or uh, or after things have gotten so bad and they've blown up that it, it then 
comes to your attention that you that you caused this conflict. You know, um, I can think of um, a few times in my own life when that's happened, and it's there's nothing like even though it's scary. There's nothing like either going to the person who has. Uh, um, injured you or having that person come to you I mean or that, however it happens there's nothing like that to uh, to bring about a sense of resolution and uh, initially at least in my own life it is tense mm. you know because I mean if I I, 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 can, I can remember times when someone has come to me and said you know and they've insisted that I've offended them about something and my first um, um, what my first inclination inclination yeah okay is uh, is to become defensive you know um, and also like the uh, the first inclination is like being defensive and also want to kind of like no I'm justified of what I'm doing firstly and we kind of like blocking that up like don't want to listen if like that not authentically from that person that we heard. If it's coming from other people, I'm gonna, we're gonna try to justify what we did. <laughs> but, yes. if, but if the, the, the person that we heard like come forward and, and tell him as the gospel said, like if your brother sins against you. And tell them. Yeah, right. and tell them. Tell them. So, right. so, and that like authentic city that come from that person like come up to us i think it's easier for us to listen especially one by one and just like bring him into the the sample first and then just like throw everything at him so why don't we do that you know why why is going to the other, the person who has injured us why is it not our first uh why, why are we not inclined to do that as kind of a first move um, um, why do we hate conflict? Why do we because avoid we it at all costs? Because you think it's an avoidance of conflict. Right? Uh, absolutely. But but so so when I don't do it though, what happens is I I build up within me this right. animosity and right. Um, and you find and it comes out of ways to right. do it. Yeah, right. to deal so with it. I talk to Father Fawn about it. I talk right. to you about it. You know, I don't talk to Kathy because right. she's the one who offended me. But um, so it does come out. Uh, Anyway, yeah, I think you know we we talk as Catholics a lot about confessing our sins, but this is the corollary to this. Uh, you know, Matthew's church. You know, we're reminded that you know the gospel writers, especially Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are probably writing for their own local communities before they're writing for everybody. You, know, you think about what this community must be like if this is sort of the rule that Matthew is setting up, um, where relationships are to be cultivated and cared for where where um where not only are we confessing our sins to one another but we're also free enough to confess someone else's sins to them not in the gossipy way but but um where the assumption is i can't know what i did wrong i can't know how to how to progress uh without your help um the assumption is we will all hurt each other um, but in order to create a kind of climate of repair, we have to have that freedom to assume that everybody is going to hurt somebody sometime, uh, but that it requires, you know, sort of this openness. Um, you know, in, in monastic communities, uh, in Benedictine monastic communities, they have this service called a, a kalpa service mm -hmm. once or twice a year where, um, you know, all of the brothers, and they're not you know, solicited to do this, but they all have time to come before the community and name their faults, their culpas, um, as a way of sort of acknowledging you know, the general sense that, that gets picked up on any community over a year that I've screwed up a couple of times. Um, you know, and, and I have to imagine the relief um, that comes from being able to acknowledge, you know, even the small things, I talk too much, or I'm always the last one to be done with food, you know, and, and everyone has to wait for me, or... Um, but, but back to this idea of the community, 
you know, the nature of our, our families or our workplaces or our church changes when it's the relationships between us that we care more about than, than making a profit or trying to attain our, our weekly or monthly or yearly goals. Um, and that seems to be what, what Matthew's talking about, what Jesus is talking about in Matthew's gospel. But it also requires us to take responsibility for those relationships, despite whatever feelings of anxiety we may have about what happens after that confrontation takes place. And uh, it is like, yes, so you said in the gospel, it said like, it's if your brother, so it's, it's already like assume that There's an relationship. intimate relationship. Mm-hmm. And so, <clears throat> and, and this is so like another way, like we assume like normally if you hurt other people, you come and fi- fix up, that up, right? But this is like another way, like asking us to go beyond what normal is. Mm. Like go beyond and you've been hurt, don't silent, go and tell that brother. Mm. And as you said, like sometimes we don't know what we did wrong. So right. we need people to help us that we all moving forward as a brother. And you know, and it's important <laughs> even when, even if I have no intention of telling anyone else uh, that you hurt me, you've hurt me, even if I, you know, um, you know, I'm not going to blab about it. Uh, I think the gospel insists that, as you were saying, because of the nature of the relationship that we have, uh, it can only be harmed, further harm, if I don't go to you and express to you, um, you know, the the injury that you caused me by either what you've said or what you've done. Like I said, even if I don't, even if I don't intend it to go any farther than myself, the fact that that it has happened, and that it has caused something of a break, is, at least from my point of view, within, even though you may never know it, uh, that, that in itself is a reason for me to go mm. and to to begin the reparation. Um, because as you said, relationships are important. You know? right. uh, in fact, they're, they're some of the most important things in, in life. Right. You know, the bonds that we have with brother, with community, with... Um, um, I, I think my experience is that people myself included, uh, I'm always afraid of the other person's response. I'm afraid um, if I go to them and uh, and explain to them the injury that they've caused me, uh, that they will blow up or something horrible will happen. And the last thing I want to do is, is, is to deal with that. You know? um, and so it's, it's easier for me sometimes just either to keep it to myself completely and to let it eventually, you know, become so fermented within that something's got to have to do it, but, or, or talk about it, on, you know, on, right. on the, the edges, to, right. just in little ways. You know, right. Um, Recruit some allies. Yes. Sure. Right. Right. Well, um, yeah, there, there's, you know, a venerable religious tradition of keeping things to ourselves and very pious and, right, right. you mm-hmm. know, the way that we can be martyrs. Oh, <laughs> He said that cruel thing, but I will. I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm, 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 I'm going to uh, offer it up. That's I will offer it up. Yes. Right. Uh, but here Jesus is saying, you, the way to offer that up right. is to actually talk to the person. Right. And of course, there are, we can be more or less skilled at this. And, and I don't know anyone who who is sitting there offering up something that that somehow the offering up, at least as they understand it, has helped them. Do you, do you know what I mean? It's it's the the two things that happen. One is there is a presumption that there's a humility or or a sanctity that comes from offering it up that I rarely see in the person who's offering it up. And the second is I don't see any dissipation of uh, of the anger. Right. Do you know? I mean, it's the, if if it's a good thing, this offering up. You know, I won't. Okay, I'll, I'll just keep it to myself then the spirit then must allow it to pass through you and to move on. But that's not what I see right. often. And so and if that's not happening, then this offering up isn't, isn't the solution. Right? right, it's an evasion. Uh, right, and I think... Uh, yeah, we, we can try to escape from our problems. 
in a variety of ways. Escape into prayer, saying, God, this person hurt me, please take the pain away. Um, you know, we can escape into other people. I'm not going to deal with this right now, but I will get this person fired eventually. Or, um, and, and oftentimes, you know, the, the insidious truth is that when we don't deal with these things head on, as, as you mentioned earlier, we'll deal with them. They will be dealt with, whether it's unconsciously, we'll find ways of accidentally letting slip a bitter word, or later we'll have to make a decision involving the person who hurt us, and we won't be able to see it objectively, and we won't be able to do the right or the loving thing. Um, so there's a way of creating problems down, down the road. But I think that the fear that you mentioned is, is well-placed. We are afraid. Of what will happen. At least that's what I get often in reconciliation. I don't know if you do as well. I mean, when, when someone often uh, spouses who have some conflict uh, will come and I'll, and I'll say, Have you spoken to the other about this? And generally the answer is no. And why I don't say so, it is what I often hear, what I hear behind the words is, I'm afraid of the response person that has a violent temper or something right. and, and so I I can't share with him or with her you know these things because I'm afraid that uh, the whole relationship will blow up and I'll have nothing at right. all you know? Right. you know now I've got a little threat or something but <clears throat> right but if I do this and that happens right. of course I've got nothing which of course it ends up being the illusion of something yes if it were That's true right. That's right. that if I confronted you with something <clears throat> you did to hurt me and you would blow up, then, then there's very little relationship. That's, that's right. Absolutely. And it's better right. to have that knowledge right. than... Right. Um, but it's also a way of... You know, I, I am not allowing you the opportunity to, to be fully human, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to recognize and to work towards. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm protecting myself from having to be vulnerable by um, depriving you of the opportunity mm -hmm. to grow in holiness, to, to be compassionate, to do the right thing. Uh, and I think what's at stake in that is, is summed up in this last line here, where two or three are gathered together in my name. If there's something between us um, that's unspoken but is causing a rift in our relationship, then Christ can't be present. The, that, that's a way in which our sins, yours or mine, can prevent sort of the fullness of what God wants to offer us from, from coming to bear. And, the only way of fixing that is to name it and to face it and to pray to God that, that somehow we can move through this conflict, but there's no way around it, unfortunately. So is, uh, so is kind of like related to last Sunday, <laughs> homily. So that's instead of like when we say just offer it up, it doesn't mean like you take it for yourself and then offer it up. No, you are afraid of taking your cross. The cross is go and deal with it. Mm. Instead of like, take it yourself and off, offer it up. It's not your cross. Right. <laughs> it's other person's cross. <laughs> right. So don't take up your cross, not other person's cross. Right. So, and, and also I, I, I like the, uh, the, 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 the way that you explain it. <laughs> like, yes, it's also helping other people too. It's a charity. We, yes. we we've been hurt, but like we helping other people to to uh, amend their life, to improve their their life too. It's not just us. And I and I've have said a few times, uh, both here and and I used to say a lot at my old, old parish that even priests, especially and pastors, we need people to come to us, not on mass, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, and. And let us know if we've offended them or hurt them. You know, we need to know that uh, because we have to grow too, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the only way that we can embrace the kingdom by 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 knowing how we've offended another, and at least trying to trying to make some reparation for it. You know, or at least having in that dialogue, having the spirit move all of us to another place. Mm -hmm. And but if there's no communication about it, then I, I walk around as if, you know, all is well. And, you know, uh, <laughs> there, there seems to be an emphasis, 
to switch from the perspective of the one wronged to the one who did the wrong. Um, the word listening mm. happens three times here. Um, if we can listen to other people when... Four. Four? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so important that it's there four times. <laughs> if I can listen to you when you have found that I have harmed you in a kind of non-defensive way, um, or even to know that I'm going to be defensive, but to say, um, I'm being defensive right now, but I'll think about what you said, and to cultivate that as a practice. Um, you know, listening here means more than just hearing your words. It means caring. You know, To listen to someone means to care about what they're saying because they are worth caring about. Um, you know, and sort of the elevation here is all an attempt to make make me care about this other person. Getting other witnesses. We're asking you, please care that you hurt this person. The whole assembly, all the people, we're telling you it's really important that you care right now. Um, but, but sort of the antithesis of this is the attempt to figure out at what point I can stop caring. You know, when can I just... And the answer is, you know, never. We, and, um, and to flip back to, to the one who's harmed, part of following Jesus is being willing, taking up our cross, as you pointed out, that if I, if I tell this person that they hurt me, they might crucify me. You know, they, they very well might. And, and that, um, that kind of comes with sort of the state of this radical vulnerability um, which is not an easy thing, I think, to take on. The, the caring, which you mentioned, um, and 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 the listening. I, I you know, what, what does it look like? And I, I think it's um, uh, when I listen to someone, as opposed to just hearing what they say, say then it requires a kind of vulnerability. Mm-hmm. That is, I've, I've got to. I must allow uh, what they're saying, the essence at least of what they're saying, uh, to permeate me, to, to enter into me. Uh, I, I can't put up a, a barrier to it. Um, so that means um, you know, having you know, whatever it takes um, to, to allow the, the words that they speak to just you know, to take root with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a hard thing sometimes. You know? Uh, you know, one of the things that makes marriage uh, a school of the Lord's service, <laughs> Saint Benedict, and why I encourage you all to try uh, marriage right, at some uh, point if you can, it really can be a great opportunity to learn how to listen. Um, sometimes it takes eight years or more. Um, but, you know, it, when you're living with someone and have to cooperate in the same kinds of endeavors, it is inevitable that every day you're probably going to say something that gets on the other person's nerves. And um, for a, for a healthy marriage and any kind of healthy relationship, um, you really have to develop the ability to be aware of your own defensiveness. Um, because again, we're not angels. In the moment, uh, I guarantee, if you walk in my office and tell me that I did something wrong, I am immediately going to do this, you know, internally. And I can't help that. That's mm-hmm. the, um, but hopefully, I will have developed the habit of mind that registers, oh, I'm defensive. My, my heart rate is up. The Fitbit says so. I'm breathing a little bit harder. Um, I need to notice this so that I can factor that all into what, what you're saying. Um, so, you know, in, in my own marriage, we've developed the practice of being able to say, Hey, I have something to share with you. Are you in a place where you can hear it? It's a little bit critical. Um, and sometimes <laughs> Natasha will say, uh, "I've had a long day with you know whatever is on my plate. I can't hear that right wow, now. Wow, can we talk about it later?" Right. And in the past, I've said, "No, we're doing it now," <laughs> and I, I don't listen. You know, and of course, then then a fight ensues. Um, but when I can hear her and say, "Yeah, let's let's talk about that later." and she knows eventually we're going to have to have this conversation, then we can create the kind of space we need to have, have that conversation. Um, that kind of soft startup can really help even any time 
we have a critical point to bring. Just saying, hey, I have something. I don't know how to talk about it with you, um, but I'd like to. Let me know when when you feel like you can, um, as opposed to just sort of barging in and thinking that all we have to do is name the thing and then the other person right. will, will even physically be able to hear it. Right. Uh, there's a lot that goes into being able to do this well. You're right. Uh, the, the, the marriage community uh, is a place where you have probably one of the greatest opportunities to become human, truly human. Uh, we, Father Fon, um, there's something about that relationship that of course we will never have. And, and therefore I think we, uh, unless we're in a community that is willing to, to do that kind of work, you know, either here at Christ the King or uh, you know, wherever, our friends or whatever it happens to be, we can never become fully human. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, and that's a sad thing. Yeah. Um, because what the gospel speaks about today, this, this encounter with the other, or this caring about the other, this, this caring about the relationship and the, enough to, uh, to share hurts and, be, and to be vulnerable and all that that goes with it. You know, unless we have a community in which that can happen, then we're, um, we're kind of um, cursed to be uh, kind of one dimension. Mm. Mm. At this point, I, sh I should weep, but I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to. That'll come later. <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go.